For my thoughts on all the latest happenings in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format, be sure to check out my channel, JG9 News. And now, on with our feature presentation. There's something about NFL players getting injured while celebrating. Football is a sport where guys, unfortunately, get injured all the time. But a lot of these injuries, on paper, make complete sense. You've got guys in pads who are muscular and can run at 20 miles an hour running at full speed against each other and trying to bring each other down to the ground by any means necessary. Of course injuries are going to happen. But for a guy to get injured, of all things, by celebrating? By just doing something that the average American would do and wouldn't think twice about? Yeah, that's absurd. The average American will get injured by getting tackled by one of these NFL players at full speed. But the average American would not get injured just doing a little dance to celebrate an accomplishment. The average American would get injured by getting hit. But the average American would not get injured by jumping up in the air to celebrate something good. And the average American, to learn more about the history of the NFL, comes to this channel, where we talk about all things NFL history with a new video every single day. So if you like that sort of stuff, regardless of what country you're from, then be sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video that we post on the channel. Thanks in advance for your support as we are so close to 60,000 subscribers. Well, I bring all of that up because while you've definitely heard of some of the crazier injuries in NFL history, like Bill Gramatica tearing a knee ligament after celebrating a field goal, Gus Farah getting injured after headbutting a wall in celebration of a touchdown, and my personal favorite, Lamar Houston tearing his ACL while celebrating a sat down by 25 points with four minutes left in the fourth quarter, you probably haven't heard of this one involving this man right here. For whatever reason, this injury, despite taking place on football's biggest stage at the time, has been lost throughout time. And more than 40 years later, it deserves a deep dive today. Because this man right here is Miami Dolphins wide receiver Daryl Harris. And in 1981, during a game against the Philadelphia Eagles, he got injured in what has to be one of the dumbest ways possible, and in a way that may have ended up defining his otherwise very good career in the National Football League. Because this is the story behind Daryl Harris, and what might just be, considering the circumstances, the dumbest injury in Monday Night Football history. Before I talk about the actual injury in question, and just how bizarre it was, we need some context to understand the importance of the game at hand, and perhaps most importantly, what was happening with the main player in our story leading up to the game that makes this injury all the more bizarre. It's November 30th, 1981. It's week 13 of the NFL season, and as we're into the final quarter of the year, we've got a big interconference battle on our hands down at the Orange Bowl in Miami, between the Miami Dolphins and the Philadelphia Eagles. Oddly enough, this is not the first time I've done a video about a game between these two teams at the Orange Bowl in the 1980s. As if you want to learn more about what happened when these two teams met in 1984, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, for the main team in our story, this is an absolutely massive game. Aside from the fact that it's on ABC in front of a national television audience, when that used to mean a ton. The good news for the Dolphins entering this game is that they started the season looking like one of the best teams in football, going 7-2-1 through their first 10 games. The bad news was that things had fallen apart since then, as Miami entered this game on a two-game losing streak, dropping their last two contests against the Oakland Raiders and the New York Jets. At this point, the Dolphins were 7-4-1, and, and the Jets had overtaken the Dolphins for the division lead, being half the game up at this point with the tiebreaker. With seven teams entering this moment in time with at least eight wins under their belt, if the Dolphins can't get a win here and they drop their third straight against a very good 9-3 Eagles team, I might add, then the Dolphins' playoff hopes with three games to go would be hanging on by a thread. And let's talk about this game right here against the Jets, because it was one of the greatest finishes of the 1981 season. Miami's offense looked absolutely abysmal on this day, with starting quarterback David Woodley going 10 for 22, completing just 45% of his passes for 63 yards, with 41 net passing yards 
when the sacks are factored into the equation. He also had no touchdowns and two interceptions, posting a pass rating of 14.6, which is worse 50 to nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. However, despite Miami's offensive struggles and inefficiencies, the Dolphins led it 15 to 9 late in the contest, with the Jets seeming to drive the length of the field in roughly two and a half minutes to win it. Sure enough, that's exactly what Richard Todd and company did, as in one of the greatest plays in Jets history, Todd found Jerome Barkham in the end zone with 17 seconds left to win the game and take first place from the Dolphins for the moment. It was an incredibly disappointing finish to an incredibly disappointing game for Miami, where you can bet that the tensions were high. And perhaps no one wanted higher tensions after that loss to the Jets than wide receiver Daryl Harris, who had two catches for 30 yards. Because after the game, he was furious with head coach Don Shula and the game plan, where the passing game was largely ineffective, even despite the Jets being down to their third-string quarterback in Johnny Lynn. Oddly enough, this is not the first time I've done a video about Harris and the drama he's been involved with on the Dolphins, as this seemed to be a fairly common theme with him, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, after that loss, Harris criticized the coaching staff, saying, That's what really tears me up. We get a guy that's hurt out there, and we don't bomb him to death, throwing missiles at him every other play. We don't take advantage of it. Why we don't? I don't know. Because other teams do it to us. If it's good enough for them, it should be good enough for us. Shula didn't punish Harris for these comments, opting not to fine him or suspend him. But he did criticize Harris for making those remarks in the first place, saying, now more than ever, is the time to pull together. Anytime a ball player says something like that, I think it's his responsibility to tell the whole story. So Harris was not exactly a happy camper going into the Monday Night Battle, especially after being held to just five catches for 65 yards in his last two games, hosting some of his least productive numbers of the season. This was a chance for the Dolphins and for Harris to get back on the right track in front of a national television audience. And with that in mind, let's skip ahead to the fourth quarter of the contest. Daryl Harris had been playing well so far with the Dolphins. He finished the game with nine catches for 114 yards. Having said that, it hadn't been translating into a ton of offensive success, as entering the fourth, the Dolphins found themselves on the verge of dropping their third straight, as they trailed 10-3, following a first quarter touchdown run by Willard Montgomery and a third quarter field goal by Tony Franklin. But still, with five minutes left, the Dolphins were in the middle of their best drive of the day, as backup quarterback Don Strzok had taken the team down the field to the 17-yard line. Faced with 4th and 4 and potentially their season on the line of the 17, the Dolphins decided to go for it. Which makes sense, because time was running out, and it was 4th and medium in the red zone. Time for Daryl Harris to make some magic happen. Four. I think that's a good call. Daryl Harris goes four. right. Cephalo's left. Nathan single setback, rose in the slot. He better hit somebody quickly. Here comes everybody. Daryl Harris. Daryl Harris had just tied the game up. What a moment for him and for this team on a play to potentially save their season and keep them alive in the playoff hunt and the AFC East hunt. From turmoil to triumph. One week after calling out his coach and having the sky come crashing down on him in his scene, Daryl Harris had just made the biggest play of the Dolphins' season, tying the ball game up. At this moment, Daryl Harris was on top of the world. And then, this happened. Flag is down. Flag is down. Own Philadelphia, though. The indication is defensive holding against Philadelphia. We're heading for a tied ball game with 5.21 remaining. Those fans. Got yep, you saw that right. Daryl Harris jumps up to spike the football and lands the wrong way coming back down to the ground, and he injures his knee in the process. And this isn't some minor injury that you can just walk off or anything like that. No, he had to be tended to and had to be taken care of, to the point where when the Dolphins ended up completing the comeback and winning it 13-10, Harris was not on the field. On a routine celebration, I might add, 
Harris had just gotten injured. We see guys do something like this all the time, where they jump up and spike the football. Spiking the ball isn't a novel concept. We saw Homer Jones doing it back in the day with the New York Giants in the 1960s, and you can learn more about him by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But we haven't seen it go this disastrous before, where the player who spikes it in a moment of jubilation ends up in agonizing pain. And after the game, despite scoring the game-tying touchdown and saving Miami's season in the process, all the talk was about Daryl Harris and what happened after he scored the touchdown, as he felt understandably horrible about getting hurt like that. Said Harris, I'm embarrassed. I feel terrible about it. When you don't get in the end zone often enough, you forget how to act. Next time, I'll hand it to the referee. I should note that for Harris, this was just his second touchdown of the season, with the other one coming back in Week 9 in a 27-10 victory against the Baltimore Colts, who had one of the worst defenses in NFL history. And this was the first time in his career that Harris caught a fourth-quarter touchdown. So in many ways, he hadn't been there before, as this was, without a doubt, the biggest touchdown of his pro football career at the time. Fourth quarter, save the season, national television audience? Yeah, he celebrated all right. He then added, My father has always taught me to do that. Act like Paul Warfield. Make it look like you've been in there a thousand times. It was the little kid coming out of me. I lost my composure and got excited. I tried to bust all the air out of the ball and make it flat. And again, it's tough to really blame Harris for this injury. Was it like Lamar Houston where he celebrated at an inappropriate time? Absolutely not. This was a fourth down touchdown in the fourth quarter to tie the game with your season on the line. Was this a dumb celebration like a backflip or headbutting a wall? Absolutely not. This was a celebration that we see all the time. This one just happened to go horribly wrong, and head coach Don Shula recognized that, telling Harris not to be too hard on himself for the injury. As Shula said afterwards, the joy of the moment had to captivate everybody, me included. I found myself leaping into the air too, but fortunately, I came down on both feet. Better it had been me hurt than Duriel. So Shula couldn't even be mad at Harris because Shula did the exact same thing and left for joy after that touchdown, especially since that play was an audible and was supposed to initially be a run, not a pass. Shula said on his policy on celebrations, anytime it's an honest emotion and not done with the intent of embarrassing anybody or putting on a spectacular for his own benefit, I have no objection. Clearly this was not the latter. This was just an honest emotion that went horribly wrong. This wasn't a choreographed celebration. This wasn't a showboating moment. This wasn't a taunt at the opposition. This was just a man spiking the football and it going about as poorly as you can imagine. The Dolphins won the game thanks to Harris's touchdown, but they lost Harris in the process. And this knee injury that happened in the game between these two teams behind me right here was so bad that it actually forced Daryl Harris to miss Miami's next game against the New England Patriots. So this injury actually had long-term ramifications. Now, fortunately for the Dolphins, they did not need Daryl Harris in Week 14 against New England, as the Dolphins ended up winning that game against one of the worst teams in the NFL, but still, they had to do it without their star-wide receiver in Harris. Now, the irony in all of this is that Harris had his best career season in 1981, setting career highs in receptions and receiving yards. It's crazy, though, that in the best season of his career, the biggest catch of his career turned out to be the one that cost him the most. I can't even say that there's a moral of the story when it comes to celebrating and not celebrating because we've all done something like this. We've all scored a touchdown on the playground and jumped up in the air to spike the football, especially when something big happened. This one just happened to go horribly wrong. It happens to the best of us. Daryl Harris had an incredible NFL career, hosting over 300 receptions and over 5,000 yards receiving across his decade in the league. But of all the catches he made and of all the yards he gained, this one in 1981 against the Philadelphia Eagles was the most rewarding, while at the same time, being the most painful. Because considering the circumstances, 
and considering just how fluky this one was, the Daryl Harris injury might be the dumbest injury in the over half century long history of Monday Night Football. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.